three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half units. Yes, very interesting. It's exactly as I thought. Mr. Crispin Enterprises. Ah, no, yet yeah, no, what it was, whilst we were on that topic, I meant to ask, how many nipples am I supposed to have? Yes. Yes, oh, I did know two is prototypical, but I've actually got four. Yes. Yes, well, some might think it looks a bit strange, but I think they'll just have to get used to it. Very well. Mr. Crispin here once again, and welcome to my workshop. In a recent video I gave the viewers a glimpse of my nipples and in today's video I'm going to be showing some close-ups, looking at the details and after that I'll get on to assembling the slide bars. But before we get into all that, what's this under my hat? Well what it is, is something that brings me on to a topic I don't get round to discussing on here very much and that is my work. I work at Rolls-Royce on the jet engine side of things and I work in a factory that specialises in the making of turbine blades and within that factory I work on the shop floor where I fulfil the role of grinding superintendent and of apprentice master. Now the key phrase here, Rolls-Royce, Rolls was the businessman and Royce was the engineer and once annually within the company the Sir Henry Royce Award is presented for engineering excellence and a small team and I last December managed to win this award so before it becomes old news I thought I would just mention it and give the team a bit of a shout out on YouTube so there's a few pictures coming up but what did we win the award for well I won't bore you with all the company jargon but basically if you imagine in any modern factory where you've got computer controlled machines robot automation somehow you have to have some system that makes it all work and you have to be able to make the machines produce what you want them to produce the way you want to produce them over the course of this six years that I've been working on it we develop a full system that covers uh, very specifically the type of components we make in the factory and post that we have also rolled it out now to four factories and although the engineering is interesting it's the effects of rolling it out across the four factories that we have won the award for. So just a brief uh, mention of that there, here's a few photos. Richard on the right and Jack and Joe on the left make up the office engineering contingent for this project. They did all the administration, the documentation and the rollout across many factories. And myself and Jamie who stood next to me make up the shop floor department for the project. We did all the on-machine testing, all the development, all the proving out, all the machine setting and we were effectively the end users and since helping to create the system we have programmed many components that are now running in full production. Now the man in black, he is the brains behind the outfit, that is Kev Sutcliffe, considered by many somewhat of a Rolls Royce genius uh, and certainly a one-off. Kev thought this whole system up out of his own head and then went ahead and made it happen. So between all of us we uh, feel we've done a good job on this and we feel it will go on to serve Rolls Royce for many years. And here on the day of the presentation can be seen myself and my closest colleague Jamie. We are stood in front of a very historic stained glass window that used to be in the main entrance of Rolls-Royce Marble Hall which was the original main works office and there's quite a bit of history behind that window so those of you who uh, find those things interesting can look up that stained glass window Rolls-Royce Marble Hall and to finish here is a glimpse of the man himself The oil application point nipple I've uh, sketched up looks like this. Quite straightforward. It is a bit on the small side, but I will now turn to the lathe and make four of them.
plotting out of longitudinal positions on a lathe with no digital readout can be time consuming and so one of my go-to methods for non-crucial components is to start with the grooving tool write down my numbers and then just plot out the longitudinal positions and go along using the graduations on the lead screw hand wheel then I just come in with the turning tool and work up to those longitudinal positions as I form the diameters. Why have I left some excess material beyond the thread? You can see here that it should stop after the thread but I have left some on. Well the first clue might be that in my prototype I have hacksawed a slot in the end. So that's clue number one and clue number two is that I've made this. So while I go and hacksaw these other four and make a new one of those because I've probably just lost it, I will let you work out the answer and I'll show you the op two for the conclusion. It definitely made the sound of a piece of metal hitting the floor got it it's exactly where i thought it would be <coughs> screwdriver slot Right, well I finally caught up with a little tinker. As I was searching I actually came across a parting blade that I haven't seen for two years, so really it was very clever of me to drop this in the place that I did. Right, you've all had long enough, so what's going on here? Well this slot is of course a dual purpose work holding and assembly aid. In the work holding phase I'm going to put these into here and using the larger diameter hole at the back I will reverse tighten them in using a screwdriver and I will then put the assembly into the collet chuck and do the remainder of my turnings. Um, the length of this just being long enough such that it has some stability in the collet. Upon finishing my turnings I will then use the same slot to reverse tighten the nipples into the slide bar reverse tighten them in, lock tighten them and then flatten them. So that's what's going to happen and I will now complete the turning up two. Here at the bench I have degreased the parts in alcohol using my brother's toothbrush and I'm ready to lock tight them together. Now one question might be why did I make the nipples this contour? Well the answer is to try and reduce their physical appearance. The holes that they go into ended up a bit bigger than I'd been hoping and so my plan is that by making the nipples this shape hopefully they will be less eye-catching because these holes do look rather big. So um, that's the design uh, intent of that. I will now uh, waste no time in lock tightening them in. And you'll see here the use of the reverse screw tactic. A small amount of lock tight. And from there the reverse screw tactic. Once I get this started in here, I'll be able to reverse it and then draw it down with a screwdriver and pull the nipple against the top of the slide bar. I'm just lock tightening them in so that I can uh, stone them down flush to uh, try and regain some surface area where those large holes had um, been put. 
dealing with the excess the manual way <clears throat> you can see there I've caught the thickness of the tape but not actually scratched the component underneath which is the whole purpose of it. And with that, the top plates take their finished form. Now, a while back when I was making these, I went to some extra trouble. Instead of drilling clearance holes for bolts, I went to the extra trouble of reaming all these holes. And as you know, I also went to the extra trouble of making studs out of silver steel, the diameter of which matched the reamed holes. Now, the purpose for this extra work becomes clear at the stage of assembly and just to give you a bit of background let's have an engineering lesson in the world of engineering nuts and bolts and threaded fasteners are a popular choice for the assembly of components and using threaded fasteners such as these for the assembly of components there are two primary functions one is the retention of pieces together by means of say a clamping force and the other is that they hold the position. Now let's imagine you are building a workbench and you've made it out of angle iron, all the pieces come together, you put bolts through the holes, you do the bolts up, two things are going on. One is the bolt is retaining the pieces together but the bolt by the nature of it going through multiple holes is also constraining those two components together. Now, let's imagine on this workbench we drill what we call a clearance hole. That allows the bolt to pass through and it also allows for a bit of clearance so that the bolt doesn't get stuck and so that the assembly is hopefully straightforward. Now, the amount of clearance for a clearance hole depends a little on the diameter. It's a sort of sliding scale, but we could be talking 0.1 of a mil, 0.2 of a mil, half a mil, depending on the diameter of the bolt. Now that's fine for say building a workbench but many engineering applications call for positioning to much greater tolerances. Take a piece of precision tooling or something, you may require pieces to fit on in tolerances that are smaller than such clearance holes. So imagine I've got a 0.1 clearance hole here that is going to allow the relationship of these two components to vary somewhat and in many applications that variation would be too much. So it will be no surprise to many that at this point I introduced the concept of a dowel. Now a dowel being a precision diameter in a precision hole allows for much greater positional constraining than the bolt in a clearance hole did, purely down to the tolerances. And of course, the use of two dowels, if I can find this hole wherever it's got to, uh, not only controls the position relationship of one hole, but it controls the whole alignment of two, uh, of a two components or more. And so the dowels here are showing a better method for the positioning of components, but of course, there's no retention. So what do you do? Well, of course, you combine dowels and bolts. In many pieces of tooling a go-to strategy is to use dowels to set the positional relationship and bolts 
to then retain the pieces together and that is of course the design concept I've gone for on my cylinder blocks where they will be aligned to the locomotive frames by means of two dowels and then retained by means of a remaining number of cap heads. So returning to the slide bars you might ask well what's all this about? Had I put nuts and bolts through all those holes and gone down the clearance hole option there would be nothing constraining the edges of the part together and although I could set them manually to all be aligned every time I take this thing apart and put it back together which is likely to happen multiple times over the build I will have to keep resetting those pieces. So based on what I've just said we might think well why don't I put some dowels in. Well okay but as you can see here to fit dowels and cap heads in you need enough free space within the mating faces to get all that in and if you take a close look at some of those slide bar features there isn't enough room. So what I've done on this occasion is to take the concept of the dowel uh, in the form of some silver steel which is a precise diameter using reamed holes and I have then produced a thread on both ends of the silver steel so I have effectively combined a dowel and a bolt with a threaded stub with a plain section in the middle to give me both the positional holding that I would get from a dowel but also the retention via the means of threaded fasteners. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's progress with the video. Well perhaps I shouldn't be showing my trade secrets but here is how I'm preparing the nuts. They come from the packet with this kind of um, scale on. I'll show you an example. It's a typical uh, cold rolled scale you get with a few unruly edges here and there. Not uh, strictly on the tidy but just to give them a more uniform appearance I've put them all on an allen key and I'm going like this and uh, just takes a few minutes and it will round over any edges and give them all a fairly uniform appearance Next up a quick look at the studs. Before I threaded them they were a nice sliding fit silver steel diameter in reamed hole. However since putting that thread on they have grown slightly on the OD and they no longer fit. So to correct this I am going to get them between two stones and roll them up and down a bit. They only actually need to go in one way on, so I'll just do the uh, longer portion. And now they fit in. Both the components and I are now in an alcohol bath. And the next step of this procedure is to lock tight one nut onto the end of every stud. Fasteners prepared and it's onto the fun bit which is putting all the bits together. Now there's a lot of holes here that need to line up and ideally the edges all line up as well. Those of you who were around at the time when I made these will be aware that I did them all as a stack and did all the holes and edges together and the purpose of doing that was to make this stage of the process easy.
and here are two finished slide bars I'm very pleased with the outcome and uh, I think they're gonna do a good job um, now just in conclusion when I first started this kind of thing probably 12 years ago machining something like this would have caused great frustration because I would have got to this stage and I would have made all the pieces individually to keep it simple and I would have tried to put them together and the holes wouldn't have lined up so I would have drilled the holes out bigger to make the bolts go in then the edges wouldn't have lined up and so on and so on now although I have had a big head since I was two I'm going to try and explain this without sounding too pompous but basically the reason these have worked out nicely is because of the method I came up with originally to machine them so if you have a look at slide bars part one you can see that I pretty much had got them in their finished form and machined them as a stack so the holes lining up and the edges lining up was guaranteed from day one and uh, I'm pleased it's played out well and I think it's uh, it was the right method right well that's quite enough patting myself on the back for one day in fact I've given myself that much praise today I'm going to open the double door so I can get my head out. But apart from that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting and see you on the next video.